Today we're going to tear down an M35A2 air pack. The first thing I'd like to do is take inventory of all the external fittings. Okay, so there's a bronze fitting right here, um, a plug here, a bleeder screw here, a little nut there, a steel fitting there that I believe will come off, a big one and a half inch aluminum nut there, a brake pressure switch there. Continuing on around, a male, looks like it's male on both sides, bronze fitting here, a 90 degree bronze fitting here, on top of the piece that has four bolts holding it on. It's a bronze female fitting into which a tube nut screws, same for this end. Bronze fitting tube nut screws into it. Let's see what else we got. Uh huh. Okay, so on the flip side, we've already looked at this, this, and this, but here's another 90 degree fitting, and this one is bronze and female. Unlike this one, which is 90 degrees and male, male. This one's female male. There's some mounting holes. That one looks like it was never used. Now I'm using WD-40 as a penetrating oil. I believe that this does make things easier to break loose. That's the easy way. First observation, my spring looks pretty good. Secondly, there's some of the petroleum jelly used to put this thing together originally. Thirdly, huh, it has brake fluid but no pitting. I am, I am lucky. Have a look, no pitting. It's just a good clean cylinder. There's that guy. This one is 11 sixteenths. And what's this? Also 11 sixteenths. I'm pretty sure the threads are the same on both sides of this. No, they're not. That is a much bigger opening and it was facing out to the world than that a much smaller opening that was facing into the, the air pack. The fitting I'm removing here is one of four that have a copper washer. It's nice that it, once you break them loose they just go ahead and come off. Now this one also has a copper washer. And it is made, it appears to be made out of steel. It's certainly completely brown. No, uh, no bronze to be seen. I think I'm gonna get this guy. Let's see if he's an inch. This is a one inch wrench. He is an inch. <clears throat> Stamping right here on mine says E13 Midland. And there was a sticker that the brake cleaner took right, that took the writing right off. 
um, that said it was made by Midland Brakes Corporation and it had a six month warranty and a return address in case it failed within six months. Okay, there's that guy. We also can take off this bleeder screw. And it's 7 sixteenths. And this probably would have been easier to do when it was still mounted on the truck. But it came loose. There we go. Nice. Ooh. There's the end of spring cap. Yeah. I was just looking to see if there's any threads in here and I don't see any. This is a brand new Craftsman uh, 12 point three quarter inch socket. Very rare. Lowe's does not carry them. So I had to contact Craftsman when I recently cracked my old one and they didn't just send me one new one, they sent me two. Which I was not expecting, I certainly do appreciate it. Ow! Okay, it's loose now. Here comes that cap. Um, so there's a copper washer. I think that's three copper washers I've seen so far. And that was very easy to take off. That was very easy. That was very easy. Everything's easy. Little bolt, little bolt. Put that on there. Put that on there. There was a nut. Kind of went off on its own. Then there is a little star style, star style lock nut. Okay, and then this bolt, which is visibly different than the others. It doesn't have a, a recessed uh, dip in the head. The others have kind of a little ring around the top outer edge. Also, this one's quite a bit longer. Okay, and then there's that guy, and there's that guy right there. This guy probably, it almost looks like it has a gasket, but I think the gasket is right here. Yep, there's a gasket. Here is this piece, which appears to have original petroleum jelly still on it. Just that's a hem aside for now. And here's a very newish looking spring. It goes down in this in this cup like that. Okay. So that's cool. I guess I still have to take these off. Let's see about this guy. Ah. Can I push this out easily? This right here, seal facing each way. Small end in first. The small, uh, small circular protrusion. This larger uh, cylinder shape facing that way goes in like that. There's four bolts down at the bottom of this. I'll be going after them next. This might be just a thing. Yeah, it was. And just that quick, there came out four completely rust-free bolts and four completely rust and paint-free lock washers that go on them.
Oh, look at that. Okay, gotta be careful here. Ooh. There's a little stack. There's a piston. And it was pointed this way. With a seal facing that way and this seal with that shape inside that there. That was sitting inside the spring like that. Oh, it's a double spring. Okay. Springs actually look to be really nice shape. Now let's take this out. Okay, there's that guy. It goes in like that. And then there's a gasket. And a uh, O-ring right there. Some rust there and there, but the actual gasket surface looks really good. I can tear this down. Oh! And I believe this was in there like that, sitting inside the spring. It is brass. And I'm gonna set this right there like that. I'll probably be able to put my foot on it. An inch and a half happens to be the same size as a deuce lug nut, and so I'm thinking why not do that? I've got my impact wrench set to the lowest torque setting right now, so we'll see if that does it first. Ha! Okay, that's the easy way, and uh, obviously this copper washer is part of it. This, this is a... Uh, Oh, I don't know if this is aluminum. It feels pretty it feels pretty weighty, but it's hard to say. That's that's pretty thick right there. It's about a quarter inch thick. Okay. So uh you can look right down the barrel. I don't know if that's gonna focus or not, but it looks perfect. I don't see any nicks or scratches or anything. I don't know if this is gonna work. <laughs> it totally did. So this is what they call a castle nut. There's little grooves in between each of the corners that could, you could say it looks like crenellations. So that goes on there. I'm going to set that aside now. I would use a smaller hammer if I had one. Um, I'm not working in my normal garage, so every tool I have here I had to bring with me and I'm getting tired of running back to go get tools. Boom. Look at that, just coming right out the back. Easy, I just need a small amount of persuasion. I, this feels like it's pressed on maybe. I'm not gonna mess with it, I don't need to. The fatter piston goes on first, then there's this band, and then this uh, wagon wheel. Oh, they both have wagon wheels. Smaller and angled beveled piston like that. So it goes like it goes together like that right there. There's a small gasket that just broke. Going around the edge of this thing. Okay, broke in two. There's more of it. Okay, so that goes around that. Which leaves me with a very nice looking surface that all I have to do is clean off. That's cool. Here comes the big guy again. And I don't mean Joe Biden. Boom. Out of there. I'm telling you, impact wrenches make your life a lot easier. And battery powered impact wrenches make it even better. Okay, so here's a look at that fitting. It's uh, Looks like it's for a inverted flare tube. It's, it's actually where this J-pipe threads into. But now I've got it out of here. This will make it easier to clean everything up. I have a medium sized vise, not a huge vise, but I was able to put it in there like this. And I made sure that I did not tighten it up a whole lot so that you know, I didn't want to distort these holes or break this aluminum. 
But between that and my heavy duty vice grips, which I put on this plug, I was able to get the plug out. I really need to know if the expansion spring that is behind this, this layer of rubber, this rubber ring, I need to know if it's any good. So there's my felt ring and it is not stuck in. It's not in terrible condition, but it's not stuck either. There's that little spring. And he doesn't look rusty. I want him. And I want him unharmed. There he is, see? I'm just going to try to work it out. It does not feel like I'm damaging this spring. But I can tell you that this this rubber ring or this the rubber that's covering the spring is very stiff. It is not very pliable. You know, I really wouldn't be surprised if this thing had never been redone since 1985 when this truck was built. Okay, there's the spring. And it looks like I'm in luck. It's in good shape. There we go. You can always feel it when it starts to happen. Okay, I thought there might be some adhesive holding this thing together. No, there's not. What about adhesive holding this on? Possibly. It, feel, it really feels stuck to it, so I think there might have been some adhesive holding this guy to this. And I guess possibly holding this guy to that. But anyway, I don't think I've damaged anything and that was the goal. This is the top piston, or as I think of it, the top part where the rubber cup kind of goes on it like this. And uh, I didn't notice this when I first took it apart, but there is uh, what appears to be a little black O-ring that goes here. It is a separate part from this rubber cup right here. All right, one of the last things I have to take apart is this guy. This socket will just go down over these bolt heads. It's kind of wedged in there against this larger round tube, but it will fit. Okay, so I can say all four bolts are the same length and uh, they all have sort of a star style lock washer underneath them and this is what it looks like without them there. Okay, so just uh, lightly threading in this brass fitting gave me enough leverage that I could break this thing apart. Is it possible this is a piece that comes off? I, I guess it is possible. Let's try that. Okay, well, I'm moving up the, the scale of things to try, so I'm going to try using my chisel like this. There it goes. It didn't take that much. There we go. There's another gasket. And bingo. One of the things I've got to get apart is this little brass guy. It's um, this moving piece. There we go. Oh, there goes the spring. My spring is in really good condition. Here's the condition of that guy. Um, I don't even think that's corrosion. I think it's um, original petroleum jelly. Here's the nut. Here's the spring. See, it's perfect. And here's the sort of the main shaft piece. And uh, it all was in really good condition. I 
I doubt that it needed to be rebuilt. My felt on both pieces has just come out. You know, based on my uh, disassembly so far, to me it looks like the felt pieces just cut, get cut to the right length and just get set in the groove and that's it. Okay, so this is not quite as easy as it looks. At least not for me. Here we go. So I got it started with the screwdriver and now I'm just kind of working it all the way around. And there it goes. I could not get these seals to come off with just like just working a screwdriver around them. So I'm trying the uh, pliers approach and that worked. Um, now that I see how it works, there's a reduced diameter shaft here that the seal sits around and so when it widens out it kind of locks it in and keeps it from coming off. I would assume this side's the same. Let's see. <coughs> okay, so that guy tore when he was coming off, but that's okay. I believe I have a replacement. and. He too has a smaller diameter where the seal goes. I've got the rubber into the center area and now I think I can just pop it out. Yep, 